Who? Okay, holy cow. Hi, hon. How are you? Good, good. Listen, um, I just wanted to give you a heads up that I'm going to be uh, putting a little bit of money on the card. But um, it's, it's for my very, very last thing I'm going to get from Spectre. So it's all good. No, no, I know I said the watch was going to be the last thing, but I mean, this is really the last thing. I mean, I have to, right? Well, it's, uh, it's the Mr. White Jacket. You know, the one I've been looking for. It's a... No, no, that's the Morocco Jacket. No, no, that's, uh, that's the Solden Jacket. That's a different one altogether. No, hon, that's, that's the Levi's one. That's from Skyfall. That's not even the right movie. This is, this is the very last... How much? Uh, so a couple, a couple grand. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean technically several grand. You know, just like under six thousand though. No, I know, I know, but it's, it is the you know these things are so rare, and if I ever have to get rid of it, I mean it's liquid. I mean there's like a million people out there that would want it. Why don't I let them get it then? <laughs> It's complicated, right? I mean, you know, first of all, it's, you know, it's the winter time, so I would get a lot of use out of this jacket. This is like an heirloom piece. I mean, I get past... No, I know all my stuff is heirloom pieces. I know. Yes, I said I would use all my stuff, too. Okay, you know what? Yes, you're right. Irresponsible. It, totally. Totally. Um, no, this is why I bounce things off of you. I think you're right. Okay, thank you. You're right. Love you, Ron. Okay, bye bye. Okay, PayPal it is. Hello, David Zaritsky for the Bond Experience. Welcome back. Clearly, that reenactment was many, many months ago. A lot has changed since then, and you can hear kind of the guilt in my voice about purchasing such an expensive piece. I no longer have the Dior, and that's the reality of collecting some of these things. Sometimes it just gnaws at you, gnaws at you long enough that you pass it on to another collector, and that's exactly what I've done with my Dior Mr. White, or as some people say, Altossi jacket. However, Daniel Love to the rescue. We've talked about Daniel Love in a lot of our other videos. He is the gentleman that does a lot of replication and frugal replications of some of the pieces that we absolutely love throughout the whole Daniel Craig genre. And, well, he's back. And luckily, even though I don't have my Dior anymore, he is now filling the void with this. The Altice, as he calls it, or Mr. White Jacket. Now, one of the things we're going to talk today, and you're going to notice that I am in shorts. It is the end of May. It is really hot out. This is me being comfortable. I'm going to get uncomfortable in a little bit just for you. But let's talk about the jacket because he's painstakingly replicated the Dior jacket. Let's bring it in a little bit. First of all, you can see that it's got the offset zipper. The offset zipper, which is just over here, you can see that it's very close to this pocket, but wide from this pocket. That's on purpose because the Dior jacket did that. It was one of the identifiable things, as was these wonderful leather tabs. Now, one of the things that you'll notice inside are these buttons that bring the jacket together very nicely. And by the way, he's done this in a beautiful cashmere blend. So it's a cashmere wool blend. It's very soft to the hand. The Dior one was unbelievably soft. This is very soft. So very, very close approximation of the cashmere. Now, let's address the elephant in the room, if you will. There's been a lot of discussion about the color. The color has always been a very vibrant blue. The Dior jacket is not a navy. It's, it's almost a, a smoky kind of um, vibrant, vibrant blue. And so is this one. Now, that being said, the tint is different than the Dior. It's not as smoky as the Dior one. So that's why you're seeing a real big pop in color, which is throwing some of the people off, but it shouldn't. This is a very close approximation to the color. 
the original coat was not a dark navy, so under certain lights, this starts to take a darker look. If you see the pictures, for example, with um, Blair, Ballard, and his jacket outside, it looks very vibrant like this. Here are the sleeve zippers. You can see that he's done a lot of great detail with that, which is fantastic. And by the way, even the buttons, the buttons on the side here, the black buttons, not chrome, perfectly done with hand warmer pockets. But if we turn this around, this is where it gets really cool. Look at this. It even has the stitching that gave away that this is a Dior jacket. So Daniel has not taken any shortcuts at all, even down to the tab collar, which helped to make it pop and obviously hold on the beaver, which is the piece right here. This is what they call super beaver. Isn't that cute? Or faux beaver. Extremely soft. Is it as soft as the actual beaver on the Dior? Absolutely not. I mean, this is obviously a faux beaver, but still very soft. In the winter, I would definitely keep this on. It is going to be a warm jacket. This is just going to make it warmer. And it comes off very easily with a series of buttons over here. Let's take a look at the inside. What's nice is the inside was also replicated very, very close to the Dior. It has pockets on either side, which is fantastic. And it even has the Royale emblem on the inside. But this is definitely something that you could wear for the winter. It is filled, um, so it does keep that warmth. But let's face it, um, one of the things that Daniel has never tried to do is say this is an exact replica. So, on the Dior ones, you don't have the stitching on the end of the sleeves. This one you do. On the Dior one, you don't have the stitching on the bottom of the jacket. This one you do. However, this is the price of this one. That's the price of this one. This is the price of the one that I purchased. So, you tell me if it's worth a small amount of artistic license and tweaking. I know what you're saying. David, that's lovely. You just went through the details, but can you show us what this looks like? Yeah, it's 92 degrees out. I'm going to do this for you guys because, uh, because it's worth it. So uh, without further ado, let's get our end peel cashmere and our pants and take a look at what these look like on. So, here we are, full regalia. Before the sweat starts, we should jump into these. Now, I have a medium right here, and I have a small. There's been a lot of discussion of different fits around this jacket. So, the medium, for example, is going to give me a fit, and I'll show you what it looks like. It's going to give me a fit of when Bond is approaching Mr. White's place. Now, one thing that I want to make very clear, and it's a little hint, is what I do. So when your jacket comes in, it comes in this very small box, so it's very compacted. What you want to do is, and I haven't done it to this jacket yet, but you want to take just a little bit of steam to it. A little bit of steam will actually make the jacket pop. Um, it'll also smooth out a lot of the wrinkles, which you want to do. So let's take a look at this. We will zip it up. Okay, so here we go. So this is a medium. Now, one of the things you're going to say right away is, looks fine. Absolutely. When Bond approaches Mr. White's place, he looks fine. It's, you know, slightly baggier kind of here. You can see it kind of with Bond, and it looks the part. I'll turn around. Looks the part perfectly. Now, one of the things that I'll tell you right away is beautiful movement. And again, the hand of this is amazing. And one of the things that you should know is that Daniel, he only had so many cashmere blends to pick from, from a color block standpoint, but this is so close, but the hand is worth it. When you're sitting here with your arms folded or just stroking the jacket during the winter, you're going to be very happy with the hand of this. But it fits fine. Now, it's a little baggy. It could probably hold another layer or two. Um, and again, it's that whole approach when Bond's in the boat definitely looks the part. However, there is another fit, 
and a lot of people have talked about this, but when Bond is inside Mr. White's place, and of course that's obviously on the Pinewood set, and let's take our lovely beaver off. When he's on the set, the jacket tends to fit a little bit tighter. It almost fits like a, a shirt jacket. So a shirt jacket, obviously, is going to be a little bit more cropped. Think about it almost as if, um, from a shirt jacket standpoint, it's like a, a trucker jacket or a Levi's jacket. Okay, And we'll take it off of our mannequin. This is real life, people. And you'll see the fit on this. Now, this is so you out there, if you're purchasing one of these, can really determine what is the look that you want. Now, mind you, from everything that says online, I should take a medium. And here is the small. Now, this will give a little bit over time because it is wool, but now you can take a look at this one. Now, this one is more like a shirt jacket. It is fitted. You can see that it's fitted in the waist. It still has room, but I could probably put one layer in here, but probably not. This is all I would wear with it anyway. But the sleeves fit perfectly. It's nice and tight. The back, you can see, is fitted. So this is more like when Bond is speaking to Mr. White. He's got that kind of fitted look. It looks like a shirt that was made for him. So it all depends. What scene are you trying to create? Is it an approach to Mr. White? Or is it talking to Mr. White? I know it sounds strange, but, you know, the looks, if you go back and watch the movie, they are different. So, comfort level, I'm comfortable in both. That one, the medium one, has a little bit more room, so if you want it true to size, if not, you can size down, but be very conscious of the size. Daniel did a very nice job with the sizing on this particular one. So, what do I give this? First of all, I love it. I mean, you know, I, I've been with Daniel throughout this project. Uh, he took pictures. Again, he is a fan. All he wants to do, quite frankly, is to allow individuals who are not crazy enough to spend the money on a Dior jacket, and I mean that in the most beautiful way for those of you that have, um, a chance, a chance to own this piece, because it's a very iconic scene. It's a very exciting scene. It's, uh, it's a very bondish thing, and this is a very bondish jacket. Another navy jacket, did you need? No, but this is not navy. This is more like a royal or a royal blue or a cobalt or somewhere in between there. Um, and I think it really pops and it stands out. I guarantee you're going to get compliments on it because it is not just another pea coat, not just a navy jacket. Anyway, love the piece. Uh, you can find the link to the website in the description of this video. This has been David Zeritsky for the Bond Experience. We'll see you very soon. Take care.